Welcome to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, transformative studies in the Word of God. I'm Pastor John Harrison. This is my podcast. Do you ever wonder about the future? Well, you're in luck. This season, we are studying future things revealed in the Word of God. I hope you're excited about that. Let's look forward to checking these things out. Let's fight the good fight of faith as we study future things. Take your Bibles and let's open to uh, Revelation chapter 19. And so uh, in, the, in our study of uh, uh, eschatology or future things, uh, we've come to, uh, a, I think, an interesting um, uh, part, if you were, uh, which deals with what happens at the second coming. And there's so much that happens that if we were to talk about all, we would just spend weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And, all, and we've already done weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, I just looked... Uh, I, I record the messages and I keep them and I, I think they're one about message 30 something right now 36 or 38 on just future things now we spent a lot of time looking at the body of Christ and future things for it for it and now we're looking at future things for the earth and after the second coming it, Daniel chapter 12 indicates the following that there is um, it talks about that uh, the abomination of desolation set, set up by Daniel or not but uh, as spoken about by Daniel the prophet uh, what is to continue for 1290 days and the interesting part about that is it's from it was it says from the time it's set up and what it's set up is in the middle of the tribulation because that's when antichrist go you know he goes sits on the throne apostle paul talks about it in second thessalonians 2 he sits on the throne he calls himself god he shows himself as god in the book of Daniel, it talks about him taking away the sacrifice. Lord Jesus Christ talks about it in Matthew chapter 24. It talks about when you see, uh, well, actually in Luke it talks about, when you see the armies surround Jerusalem, flee to the mountains because you know the end is nigh. Uh, in Matthew chapter 24, uh, it talks, you know, Christ says, when you see the abomination of desolation, you know, when that happens, you need to flee to the mountains. That's all in the middle of the week. The interesting thing prophetically the mid, you know, tribulation is seven years long, okay, and, and a prophetic year is uh, 360 days, so like half the tribulation, which would be, is, is really 1260 days, okay, and the other half is 1260 days, and the, I, I don't think there's a, I don't think on day 1260 something happens, it, but it's, in, you know, there's a little, ga- a little piece of time in there, maybe a week or so, or two of time, so there's a little bit of overlap. But the interesting thing, interesting thing is, it talks about the, the basically what Antichrist sets up continues 12, for 1,290 days, which is about 30 days past the second coming. So Christ comes back. So like in Revelation chapter 19, right to where we're at, right? Is that where I told you to go? Or did I say 20? 19, right? Um, yeah. So in verse 11, you have the second coming, or at least a, one, one reference to it. And it says, and I, and I saw heaven open, Revelation 19, 11, sorry. I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And notice what it says. And in righteousness, he does what? Judge, Judge and make war. Now, so like, you know, when, the battles are, when does the battle of Armageddon happen? It happens in this time period. Now, the issue is what we looked at was that judging and making war, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a fair amount of time for that. In fact, what we find out is during his 30 days, what Christ is doing is purging the land. He's cleaning the land up. The land is where Israel's at, okay? Not just where the map's at today, but what prophetic Israel looks like, what God talks about Israel being much larger than that. Um, further north, further, you know, extends further west, east uh, from, the, from the Mediterranean Sea and much further south, all right? And so he's purging the land so that, just to read one passage so you have it, Zechariah 13, and then we're going to move into the second part here. Zechariah 13 is an um, interesting passage. In verse 8, so this is what happens at the second coming. He comes in righteousness to judge, and righteousness he, ju- he, d- he judges and makes war. He judges, he judges the people. If you want to know what's going on in Matthew, it talks about, you know, there's two in the field and one shall be taken. And, and there's two at the, uh, at the well? No. Yeah, the, uh, grinding, right? The one shall be taken. They're taken in judgment. And the issue is God's judging this person's somebody I know. You know, Christ said, you know, I don't know you, right? There's some judgment, right? I don't, you know, we know there's some. Uh, in Matthew 25, there's another issue of judgment, by the way, and that happens. That's what I wrote here. There's another judgment, and here's here. But there's no war now. 
because war is done, right? Zechariah 13, verse 8 says this, And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, Zechariah 13, verse 8, two parts therein shall be cut off and, what? Die. But the third shall be left therein. And I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people. And they shall say, what? The Lord is my God. So he's talking about, these are my people and the ones that die are not. He's purging the land. He's cleaning it up. So that at this, after, this, after this period of time, there's not one unrighteous person in the land. All right? He's purged the land. Um, at the end of this period of time is what I want to talk about just momentarily. So when you get right to the end of this, right in here is where you have the battle of Armageddon. Armageddon. So the, uh, the, the, this battle... Okay, and so if you look down and uh, go back to, uh, well, verse 2 of chapter 14. You're sitting there right in Zechariah, right? All right. By the way, Zechariah 13 and 14 sort of lead you through the same period of time. So in Zechariah 14, verse 2, it says this, For I will gather all nations against what? Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and houses rifled, and women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity. So the Israel people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and what? Fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. All right, and then verse 4 says, and his feet shall what? Stand. So after he fights, he stands. He gets off the horse that you read about him coming out of heaven in Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. He comes out on his horse. Go back to Revelation 19. Anyway, so you know, Jerusalem has been taken. They've been all, you know, it says back in, in Revelation 11, it talks about, I think it's 11, it talks about Jerusalem being trampled down by the Gentiles. For 1,260 days, they're under, they're under siege. As we looked at last time, he purges the land. Jerusalem's the last stop on the map, okay? He gets off his horse and goes into Jerusalem, and there's, there's a battle, all right? There's a battle, and he, and he purge, takes care of it. In verse uh, 17 of Revelation 19, the battle of Armageddon, okay, and I saw an angel standing in the sun and cried with a loud voice, saying to the, all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. You don't, want gather, you don't want to come to this supper, by the way. This is not the supper you want to come to. That you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses, and then to sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. All right? And it goes, verse 19 says, And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their, what? Armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse. And against what? His army. So, has he gotten off his horse yet? No, no he's still on the horse, right? So, this is the battle of Armageddon. And, and, there's gonna, and so, who all's there? Armies of the earth? Who else? And that Christ, the beast and the false prophet are both there, right? So they're leading the charge, right? And they're leading the charge against God, right? Well, guess what? They don't win. Okay, so they, you know, so they die. And there's, there's a number of passages in the Old Testament that list that, right? Verse 20 says this. So this happens right at the, right at the, no, I should say in the middle, right around 1290 here, before Christ gets on his throne, it says in verse 20, it says, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast, what? Alive in the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Verse 21, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse. So when does the beast of the false prophet get cast into the lake of fire? Before this day, before he goes sits on the throne, Right? Because he hasn't got off the horse yet, right? They're, so they're cast in. He, he, you know, he they grabs the leaders first. Boom, they're taken care of. And then the rest are slain, these armies. Which proceed out of the mouth, of, and, and all fowls are filled with their flesh. All right? So then he gets a timeline. So uh, battle of Armageddon, beast and false prophet. Or beast and false prophet are cast into, that's fire. Cast into the lake of fire, right? At this point... Then he gets off his, you know, he goes down to Jerusalem, gets off the horse. This is the Mount of Olives Cleaves. Everybody, there's, a, there's some stuff going on. But anyways, basically all the children of Israel flee out of the city. All the prison doors open. 
there's an ability for them to escape out. And then he goes in and he purges the rest of the city. All right. And then he's going to take the guy sitting on the throne, who happens to be who? You know, it's, it's Antichrist. He's in the pit, but see, it's actually Satan. He's going to grab the, the third party of this. All right. Verse, chapter 20, verse 1. All right. It says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is what? The devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, set a seal upon him that, that, that he should deceive the nations no more. But it says there, till, so he's going to do it again, right? So the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And we'll try to, we'll look at when that happens. But anyways, so Satan, Christ is going to basically take Satan and cast him into the bottomless pit. By the way, the lake of fire and the bottomless pit are two different places, all right? The bottomless pit is in hell. Hell is not the lake of fire. Lake of fire is the final place uh, for what's going to happen, all right? It's the, it's the final abode of all the lost. Uh, it's, uh, it's a slightly different place, right? But anyways, the, uh, say let's put in the bottomless pit. And the bottomless pit's a unique place in hell. It's the only place in hell you can get in and out of because there's a key, all right, there's so like in the middle of the book of Revelation, uh, an angel comes down and, open, ha, and has the key to the bottomless pit and opens up and all these strange things come out of the bottomless pit. All right, Satan's going to be in there for a little while. And then, by the way, he can't get out, but God has the key and he'll be, re and he'll be released for a season. And then he'll be cast into the lake of fire where the beast and the false prophet are. All right, that's, you, don't, you don't get out of this spot. All right, so Christ gets off, the th he gets on, he sits on the throne. Now what happens? Well, there's no more war. But there's still judgment. There's still judgment. So uh, before we go to, you know, to read the rest of chapter 20, um, well, let's, let's read about what happens to the rest of Satan here. So uh, oh, I did read that. Uh, verse, well, I guess I did read the whole thing. So go back to Matthew 25. Matthew 25. So Jesus Christ sort of lays out a, a, um, a, a events uh, of what's going to happen because he's at, you know, just like I get asked questions, what, you know, what's going to happen? Well, the apostles asked Jesus Christ what's going to happen, all right? And, he, you, know, so, you know, basically want to know what's going to happen, you know, in the next, you know, in the, you know what's happened coming up. And so in verse 3 of chapter 24, <clears throat> in response to this, Jesus Christ is going to give a, an answer, all right? But in Matthew 24, verse 3, it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, which you're going to one day, he's going to get off the horse on, he's going to cleave. Right? He's sitting right there where he's going to, you know, the next time he's on the Mount of Olives, by the way, this is two days before the crucifixion. All right? When you go to chapter 26, you find out he says to the apostles, in two days, I'm going to, going to go. It's, it's, it's the time. So it's just two days before the crucifixion, Add on three days, three nights, right? And then add 40 more days and he's ascended, right? So you're 45, six days before he ascends, all right? Less than, less than a month and a half, right? And then the next time he's on the Mount of Olives, because I don't think there's any account of being on the Mount of Olives after this, when he, he's going to step on the Mount of Olives, he's going to cleave, and he's going to head into Jerusalem, take the throne, all right? With me? So it's an interesting, you know, sort of scenario if you think about what's going on. But in chapter, verse 3, it says, And he sat upon the mount of all his disciples, came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming in the end of the world? All right, so, you know, what, you know what's going to happen? What, what, you know, what, you know, when, how do we even know when you come back? How do we, how do we know when, when this is all going to happen? And so then Christ basically takes them systematically through the tribulation. All right, so you, 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 verse 15 of chapter 24, you see the abomination of desolation Spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place, who shall read it, let them stand, and let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains, and goes on down, and goes down to verse 21, it says, For then shall be great tribulation, such was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, no, nor ever shall be. That's really the second half of the tribulation. You get into verse 27, and then you, have the, you basically have the second coming. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth unto the west, so shall also the what? The coming of Son of Man be, right? And notice what verse 28 says. For wheresoever the carcass is, what? Well, why does he say that there? Well, because there's judgment, right? And by the way, it's, and, and it talks about, you know, after the tribulation, there's going to be some signs and things, and there's going to be a sign of his coming, 
uh, and there's going to be a great sound. Verse 31 says, And you shall send his angels uh, with a great sound of a trumpet. They shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heaven to the other. So part of the whole thing is, is God's going to gather all the, all the elect back to, into Israel, or all of Israel back to Jerusalem, or Israel. Um, then you have these couple parables. Uh, you have, the, you know, the, this sort of judgment type of stuff, you know, for the days of Noah, and you know, stuff like that, two in the well, two grinding, all that type of stuff, and, and they're kicked out. You have the te, uh, ten virgins, then you have the, the, the servants, the faithful servants, which are basically the judgment criteria that Christ is using during this period of time when he's purging the land. He's coming through the land. He doesn't have, by the way, it's not like, I mean, he just knows, right? He's God, right? It's not like he's, you know, two people are standing there and going, oh, I've got to think about this. You know, he knows which one's his and which one isn't. And uh, it's, a, it's a scary time for those that aren't. What about the rest of the world? Well, there's armies that came, right? Is that everybody else? No, there's still lots of people who aren't part of armies, right? Right? And so that's, that's the rest of this. In chapter 25, verse 31, okay, you kick up, you kick to the next part. By the way, these time frames, there's 1,290 days, okay, there's judgment to make war part, he's going to sit on the throne, but Daniel then says in chapter 12, he says, if you make it the day 1335, you're blessed. Blessed is he that waiteth until day, was it, I think it says, um, um, I can't remember what exactly it says, but it's, thir- you add it up, it's 1335 days, all right, it, it says 1335 days. So you're blessed at this point. You're not blessed at this point. Christ is sitting on the throne. Is everything perfect? Not yet, all right? There's still some more judgment. Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon what? The throne of his glory. So now he's sitting on his throne, right? All that war Armageddon's done, right? And, he shall, uh, and before him shall be gathered what? All nations. And he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides as a sheep from his goats. I know people talk about this as a national judgment, and it, and it is. He's bringing all nations but he's not separating, oh, you're part of Egypt, you're gone. You're part of America, you're gone. He's not saying that. He's bringing everybody from all the nations there, and then they're being separated as individuals. Because you take a look at what it says. He's, you know, he's, talk, he's talking to individuals. So there's, there may be righteous people in Egypt, and there may be righteous people in America. You might think, like, why would I say that? There may be righteous, aren't there righteous people in America today? Yeah. So how many righteous people are left after the rapture? None. So, so America is a heathen nation, like every other nation on the face of the earth at that point. Not one believer on the face of the earth after the rapture, right? So it's a, it's a different world, right? But there will be righteous people. In fact, the uh, book of Revelation shows that the, you, you can't count how many there are. So many, of, so many people are going to be, come out of tribulation and... and, and uh, uh, read Revelation 14, I believe it is, it talks about it. Revelation 11, no, Revelation 7 and Revelation 11, towards the end, talk about this great, great number. But anyways, so he's going to divide it. So bring, bring all the nations come, all right, and then he divides the people as, uh, as in the two different categories. Verse 33 says, And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. All right, we were um, yesterday at... JB Farm, what's it called? Tree Farm, right? And there were, there were some sheep, and there was a little goat. Remember the goat, Brittany? They kept bucking him down that thing. Goats are just disobedient, okay? That's it. They, they're, they're disobedient. The idea is they, they have but sheep are followers, right? They sort of, bah! I remember, I don't remember where we're at, but when I was a kid, we used to do stuff, I guess. We'd get in the car and just drive around on a Sunday afternoon or a Saturday. You just drive through the countryside. And we pulled over and there's a whole bunch of sheep down in this field and uh, pretty far away. And I don't know, I was 12 or 13 years old or whatever it was, and I went, bah! and they all come running. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, they were running towards us and it, like, it really f- scared us, you know, because uh, I didn't live on a farm, so but so but all the sheep come running. It's like, oh, okay, well they're they're following, you know, whatever it was. Apparently, I did a pretty good like, come here and ba ba sound, whatever it was. So that means ba, come here. So, but anyways, uh, but anyways, but sheep are followers. Goats are rebellious, and they 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 buck heads, right? You know, that's what they do, right? Pick any sheep of any type of category, and they'll 
They go like that. So, but anyways, so so um, so he says to the sheep. He says, Then shall the king, Jesus Christ, sitting on the throne, say unto them on his right hand, Come, be blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. He says, Come on, you come on into the kingdom, right? Because you're going to be blessed, all right? And it says, For I was a hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came into me. Understand, all these different events happened in the tribulation. So these people risked their lives to do this. So if you went in, the, you know, so if you can't, and that's what he's going to say here. He says, so "Then shall the righteous answer, him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee?" The king shall answer and say, "Then I'm verily I say unto you, for as much you've done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me." And the least of these, my brethren, are were really all the all the all the all the righteous, okay, including Israel, okay. It was just not the Jews; it's everybody that's part of God's family at that point. And He says, "If you done it to them, you did it to me." Well, if to do that during the tribulation, especially in the second half of the tribulation, is basically letting yourself be known that you're not part of Satan's you know cohort. You're not part of uh, of you know you have not taken the mark of the beast. Right, you're, so you, you know, you're, you know, the way, to, the way to survive is to, the way, the way to survive and stay alive, is to hide, all right, and somehow you know try to work together and to make it happen, uh, and so then and so, and then the king answered and said unto them, verily say unto you, anyway, okay, so you did it to them, so you come, you know, you done it to me, verse forty one. Then shall he say unto them on his left hand, the goats, depart from me, cursed into what, everlasting fire, prepared for who, devil, devil and his angels. So. So anyway, so the Abyssinian fire, this lake of fire thing, is really not created for man. It's created, you know, it was created for the devil and his angels. And he says, "You, you need to depart. Just depart from me. Go." He says, "I was hungry. You gave me no meat. I was thirsty. You gave me no drink. I was stranger. You took me not, not in. Uh, naked, and you clothed me not. Uh, sick uh, and in prison, you visited me not. Then shall they answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we a hungered and a thirst or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison or did not minister unto thee?" Um, by the way, I don't think they saw the, the other judgment part or they would have heard that. All right, so there's some separation there, right? It's not like they're milling around together, okay? They're in a holding pen over here somewhere. Then shall he answer them saying, Verily I send to you as much as you did it not one, uh, to one of the least of these, you did it not unto me. And these shall go away in the everlasting punishment, but the righteousness into what? Life eternal. So this kingdom's life eternal. So, so there's a judgment. So this is these. I mean, I'm gonna, for the sake of everybody, calls it this, this national judgment, which I can't write for some apparently judgment. So this, these, you know, these, this na the nations are brought and they're judged. All right. It takes some time. About how much time? Well, they got to get them there, right? It's not like you're sitting there and like. Pfft, you're transported like you see on Star Trek or something I got right. So they got to get him there, okay? Uh, so it takes a little bit of time. Uh, apparently, it's going to take 45 days to accomplish this task. Uh, there's some other stuff going on in this period of time. Uh, Israel is, you know, there's some things happening in Israel and stuff. Uh, but um, there's, a, there's judgment. Once you make it to this point, how many unrighteous people on the face of the earth? None, right? Because you've just, all the armies that have rebelled are gone. Everybody in the land, it's unbelievers purged and and basically now you've taken everybody else you brought them and you're either you know righteous you'll have a life eternal or you're gone right right but there's some other stuff going on so go to revelation chapter 19 no 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 it's just a little bit you can't let me do just a little bit more all right all right was i already snapped all right i don't hear those things all right those elections take my time away out there so all right, uh, next week I'm here. We'll, we'll be pretty close to finishing this part, and we'll, we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at the millennium, and, uh, uh, and I'm not going to do a lot of detail about it, and uh, we'll go on. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for your love. Thank you for all you are. Help us, Lord, just to be obedient to you, Lord, to seek your will in all things. Let us see your hand, Lord, and know, Lord, you're at work. Help us, Lord, to just know that you are good. And Lord, just to trust you in everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
You've been listening to the High Bandwidth Word Podcast, Transformative Studies in the Word of God. I hope you've enjoyed the study. Please subscribe, like, and comment. This podcast is available on many podcast platforms. Just search on the title. Now, until next time, fight the good fight of faith, and God's best to you. Thank you.